Let's take a look at the human brain. So you should be able to label a diagram like this and recognize the main parts. So let's look at the main names. You probably heard about them, the cerebellum, the medulla oblongata. So just really quickly, you've heard of all of these. Oh, I just lost my big sleeping brain. Let's leave that at the side here. Isn't that cute? That's very cute. Cerebral hemispheres, cerebellum, and you need to know the main functions of each of these as well too. So uh, let's start with cerebellum because cerebellum actually sounds like cerebalance, doesn't it? Coordinates unconscious functions, movement, balance, also some cognitive functions. If you're able to understand some of this, so just remember that cerebalance, and that's going to help you with that. Brainstem, spinal cord is easy. This is just connecting the brain to the rest of the body. You don't want to damage your spinal cord by breaking your neck or something like that because that can prevent you from transmitting things, transmitting messages to your body, and then you therefore become paralyzed. Let's look at the medulla oblongata. Control some vital reflexive functions. Uh, vomiting, which is a horrible thing to do. But you need to do it. Your body's trying to help you get rid of some stuff. So just trust your vital reflexive functions. Breathing, got to do that. Digestion, heart activity as well. Pituitary gland is very famous. You've heard about many kinds of hormones that the pituitary gland actually secretes, including follicle-stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, which men have as well, by the way, not just women. The hypothalamus is very important for controlling all things related to homeostasis so you've got hormone regulation coming from hypothalamus so actually messages from the hypothalamus actually tell the pituitary gland sometimes when to secrete those particular hormones so regulates the internal environment and hypothalamus kind of sounds like homeostasis doesn't it there you go finally the cerebral hemispheres that's where all your creative thought memory thinking learning emotions come from all right, so that is your brain. Can you remember? Go ahead, take a look at this, pause the video, see if you can match all these up. Which ones of these? Remember, cerebalance, hypothalamus, sounds like homeostasis, etc., etc. You can try those out. Okay, how do we know what we know about the brain and what parts actually do various things? So, I mean, uh, there are some ethical issues that are involved here, but in my mad science lab, I could actually start opening up the brains of animals and literally this has been done before I'm sure this is controlled much more carefully now but I don't know it's a, it's a good uh, debate to have research has been done where the optic nerve was rerouted into an auditory area of the brain what the animals developed the ability to process the visual information in what was considered to be an auditory part of the brain so you can seems like you can make connections between different parts of the brain by doing some mad science rewiring occasionally some crazy accidents happen like this you've heard of this dude Phineas Gage had a, an explosion occurred and he had this big metal rod driven straight through his head and people said he was a bit of a meanie afterwards. So behavioral change, he survived it. So this is, this is useful for scientists. When humans suffer brain damage and develop lesions, parts of the brain that are actually not functioning or have changed function, it is possible to study the effects of the damage to certain areas and the resulting loss of function. So people who get damage in the left side of their brain um, sometimes have difficulty with their language, with their use of words, forming sentences and things like that. So if we were crazy, we would just take some kids and uh, put them in a lab, you know, get thrown in jail and open up their brains and start doing all kinds of damage and see what kinds of things it actually uh, could cause. But thank goodness we have laws in place to protect ourselves from that. One less kind of controversial way is fMRI scanning. And this should be a little f actually. Functional magnetic resonance imaging. So it turns out that active parts of the brain require more oxygen and we can actually visualize that. We can visualize that using an MRI scan basically. So when a certain part of the brain is active it requires more oxygen. Hemoglobin with oxygen is referred to it as oxyhemoglobin and when there's no oxygen attached it's called deoxyhemoglobin and turns out the difference between hemoglobin with oxygen attached and without oxygen attached will actually respond differently inside a magnetic field so it's actually visualized. So this is, you know, you see this in all kinds of TV shows where you put somebody into an MRI machine and you show them images of Apple 
person, uh, sexy man, sexy lady, and then you see which parts of the brain are actually lighting up because there's more activity in there, which is kind of neat. So it tells us which parts are for language, emotion, hatred, anger. Very interesting, the stuff that we can find out. This is definitely much more doable than deliberately doing this or doing this with animals. So here's something you can pause. I'm not going to read it to you. You can pause and then read this as well too. Very, very interesting. So I'm going to move on. If you want to read that, pause because uh, it'll, it'll help you remember something. Video to check out. Okay, moving on to the nervous system. The nervous system is broken down into these categories. And so far, you probably understand the difference between the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, the CNS and the PNS. All right. The central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord. I got it. All those extra neurons that are running, uh, branching off from the spinal cord are either sensory neurons or motor neurons. There are relay neurons that are in between as well, too. But for simplicity's sake, we're just going to say motor neurons and sensory neurons. The motor neurons that go and do things, send information from your brain to your body to do things, can be split up into the autonomic nervous system, the ANS, oops, and the SNS, the somatic nervous system, which is the voluntary control of muscles. So when you are like pumping iron, that means you're actually using your somatic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is for homeostasis and involuntary control. And right now I'm exhibiting involuntary control of laughter for various childish, childish reasons. So what we're interested in is, is this autonomic nervous system, which can be split into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. One of these is responsible for preparing us for fight or flight, and the other for when we're calm. So here's how to remember it. Parasympathetic sounds like, and this is a student gave me this idea, uh, sounds like parents, and your parents are supposed to calm you down, I, I guess. In, in normal circumstances, they're supposed to calm you down not prepare you for fight or flight. So I guess this student who gave the example has a very good relationship with the parents, which is fine. Sympathetic sounds like sympathetic, sympathetic. So it's like, I don't know, like fighting is a sin. I don't know, whatever. If that helps, it helps. If it doesn't, then ignore it. Sympathetic versus the parasympathetic system. So what do they actually do? What I've highlighted here are the main things that you should try to understand. So here's what happens when you're sympathetic system kicks in sympathetic is sin right so prepare for fighting or running away and if you if you're matched up with person who's uh clearly bigger than you uh you can you're, you make a smart decision and and run instead they probably won't chase you either sympathetic system is going to help dilate your pupils by dilating your pupil it's kind of like a camera lens it narrows the narrows the what am i trying to say the depth of field and allows you to focus in very specifically on the actual target you're looking at your heart rate accelerates okay pumping more oxygen to the rest of your body digestive activity increases we're rerouting the blood flow to other parts of your body like the muscles and stuff like that stimulates glucose released by liver so the glycogen that was stored here we need glucose going straight to the muscles to maximize atp production for fighting and so that's going to be important right there secretion of epinephrine and norepinephrine basically as hormones to help increase your metabolism and make you ready to do some crazy things when you're calm the parasympathetic system kicks in the parents constricting your pupils you don't have to allow as much light in and it protects uh, your retina a little bit more your heart rate can be normal and you can focus on other things like breaking down foods and digesting and eating so usually when you're eating you're not really on edge although if you look take a look at some humans when they're eating they tend to be looking around a lot like they think someone's gonna steal their sandwich all right i'm gonna split this up into two parts we're reaching 10 minutes here in the next part we're gonna be talking about pupil reflex how pain is perceived and i think that's it oh, maybe i should just do it no we're gonna separate it out all right see you in the next one